A lot of you have been sending me questions asking how I do night photography, so I'm going to try and go over everything that I do, so hopefully I'll answer all your questions. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the equipment, and then some of the settings that I use, and then we're going to probably head out and put those into action. I'm going to do a blog post as well, listing all the equipment that I use and all the settings, so if you want to check that out too, just look in the description down below. So the first thing you're obviously going to need is a camera. I use a DSLR, but anything with manual controls should be okay. The next thing you're going to need is a wide angle lens with a large aperture. This is a 24 to 70 millimeter, and it opens up to f2.8. And that's because one of the problems you're going to have with doing the night photography is that because the Earth's rotating, that's going to cause star trails in your image. And you can avoid star trails with a wide angle lens because the movement isn't as severe. When it's zoomed in, the movement's just magnified. You can get around this with the 600 rule. The 600 rule is a way of working out your maximum shutter speed without getting any star trails. So what you do is you take 600 and divide it by the focal length that you're using. So for this we've got a 24mm. So that becomes a 25 second shutter speed. We can go faster than that, but you don't want to go any slower. If you're using a crop sensor camera, like a Canon 600D, you've got to take that 24 millimeter, times it by the crop factor, which is 1.6, and that'll leave you with a 16 second shutter speed. I'll do the maths on some of these for you and make a list and put it on my blog for you so you can just go out and shoot. The next thing's probably the most important and that's like a heavy duty tripod. You want something that's actually going to hold the weight of your camera and it's actually going to stand up to the wind. If you can wobble it with your little finger it's, it's pointless. Just don't buy that. And the next thing that you want to take with you for obvious reasons and that's a torch just so you can see where you're going and it'll help you with setting up your camera gear. Because you're going to be doing long exposures, you're going to need some way of firing the shutter without actually touching your camera because that's going to introduce camera shake and it just won't look that good in the end. So this is just a cheap one I got off Amazon and it just plugs into the side of the camera in your trigger with that. Or oh, This is one that came with my camera and you just, same sort of thing but it's wireless. And then lastly, you're going to need spare batteries. It's pretty much always really cold when you're out, so your battery life's just going to get eaten through. So I tend to take a couple of extras, and if you keep them in your pocket, they're going to stay warm and they'll last longer. Generally, with the focusing, I put it into manual focus. Then on the top here, I twist it around until it's on the infinity mark. I generally find that's normally in focus, but if you're struggling with that, if you put it onto live view, then choose a point off in the distance where you want to focus, and then just tweak it until you get it all in focus. And then settings wise, we've gone over the 600 rule, so that number there, that's going to vary depending on what lens you've got on. I've got the 24 millimeter around here, so I've got it at 25 seconds. I keep the aperture as wide as possible. I find that helps just make the stars pop out a bit more. And then the ISO is the one that I vary the most. I try and keep it as low as possible, but that's where I generally give the most give. And then the white balance, I tend to put this onto tungsten. I find that's usually in the right ballpark and then I shoot raw so I can always change that afterwards but I find that's usually right. So now we're on to the more fun part. I'm going to use the word fun pretty loosely. It's kind of creepy sometimes but um, it's less about the technical stuff now and it's just actually going out and putting it into action really. So I'm just above Ulverston. don't know if you can see it. We're going to climb up this hill up here. You can't see that at all on there. 
we should get quite a good view over town so I'm going to walk up to the top and then we'll set up the camera stuff there and then we'll walk you through it. So I'm at the top now and I've got the camera set up and so I've got it on the tripod and I've got the, the trigger release plugged in and it's a 5D Mark III with the 24 to 70mm lens on it. So now it's all set up I'll go through the settings that I'd use in this situation. So here I've got it on the 10 seconds, so f2.8, now you're so at 500. I've got the white balance on tungsten and it's manual focused to infinity. So I'm going to set that off now, but while the shutter's open you don't want any light going in the back of the camera. So I'm going to turn this off for now and we'll see what we get. So I'm just using the shutter release now, it's going to be dark for 10 seconds. And that's how it's come out on the back of the camera. You can see all the stars in the sky up there. And you've still got quite a bit of detail down here. Like all the houses are, are sharp. It's hard to really see the pitch on the back of the screen though. So I'll put a few examples in my blog. There's a link in the description below. And then you can see how the pictures come out. There's like a few other little tips that I thought of. And that's checking what's in the field or the location that you're going to before you actually get there, like in the daytime, just so you know what, what to expect really, because um, the farmers tend to move around the stock a lot, so if there's like a bull in the field, I'd like to know that before I get there really, because I don't really stand a chance against one of those guys, so I'd probably just pick a different location. Ideally, it's better when the moon's not out. You can just about see it up there. Um, it tends to like, make the sky really bright and the stars don't stand out as much and you can also say the same thing about shooting over a town because there's too much light pollution so I've pretty much chosen the worst place to come to so if I can get something from this you can get something from going to the middle of nowhere where there's no light pollution and it's you'll get better pictures of stars. One other thing to consider if you want to do cityscapes and townscapes is the time of the night that you're going to come out. I found it's better to leave it till later on in the night. It's about one in the morning now, so most people have gone to bed. And as you can see, there's not as many lights on. If I came out about 10, 11 o'clock, there'll be tons more lights on, and that would make your job a bit harder, because when the shutter's open for 10, 15, 20 seconds, then all that light is just going to end up as like a big blown out area in the foreground and that's just going to look terrible so I found this is the best way to avoid that. So that's the basics behind doing night photography. There's a lot of trial and error so the first few times you go out you might not get anything but it's just keep going out and then you'll get better at it. If you found the video helpful then please like this video and subscribe to my channel and if you get any pictures and you'd like to share them then I'll put my social links here so you can put it on Instagram and Twitter and use hashtag Adam Kappa and I'll check those out and tag me in the photos as well um, on Twitter I'm Adam Kappa photo and on Instagram I'm Adam Kappa photographer so looking forward to seeing your pictures and I'll see you next time